In November of 2001, deep inside the data vaults of the Hong Kong Jockey Club, a single ticket came through the system. It was perfect. A trifecta bet, predicting not just the winner, but the exact order of the top three horses in the season's biggest races. The payout? Over 50 million US dollars. And then, nothing. No face, no name. No one showed up to claim it. No newspaper picked it up. Not even a whisper in the world's most watched betting market. It just disappeared. But this wasn't a forgotten ticket. This was the end of a plan, a system, years in the making. Behind it, there was no crime, no scam, just math, used better than anyone else ever had. His name was Bill Benter, a quiet American, a physics graduate. He didn't cheat, he didn't bribe, he didn't even leave a trace. He just wrote a code and quietly outsmarted one of the most complex betting systems in the world. And the craziest part? He walked away before the world ever noticed. Through the betting market, you, you have to make a serious effort at it. If you do that, it's, uh, it's remarkably predictable, surprising successes. Bill Benter wasn't a gambler in the traditional sense. He didn't chase the thrill. He didn't care for luck. What interested him were systems, and more importantly, how to beat them. He studied physics at Case Western Reserve University, and after graduating in the late 1970s, he came across a book that was quietly circulating among the people who thought differently. It was Beat the Dealer by mathematician Edward Thorpe. In it, Thorpe demonstrated how blackjack could be beaten using probability theory and card counting. It wasn't a theory, it was a proven method, and it made sense to Benter. He moved to Las Vegas, joined a card counting team, and for several years played blackjack in a way most people didn't understand. No emotion, no risk taking, just cold statistical execution. It worked, until it didn't. Casinos started recognizing him. His photo was passed around. One by one, he was banned from the tables. Not because he cheated, but because he was winning. At that point, Benter could have stopped. But the idea of walking away didn't appeal to him. Not because he was addicted, but because the system had become too easy. Blackjack had a limit. He wanted something bigger, something with more data and less structure. That's when he met Alan Woods, a former insurance actuary from Australia who had turned his attention to horse racing. Woods believed the real opportunity wasn't in cards. It was in Hong Kong. Unlike casinos, Hong Kong's horse racing industry ran on a paramutual system, where bettors compete against each other, not the house, and billions were wagered each year. Woods had already started building a basic prediction model. He needed someone who could take it further. Benter agreed. In 1984, he left the US and moved to Hong Kong. The goal was simple, develop a system that could beat one of the largest betting pools in the world, not through luck or deception, but through mathematics. And that's exactly what he set out to do. In 1984, Bill Benter arrived in Hong Kong. It wasn't for sightseeing. It wasn't for a fresh start. It was for a project, one that would take shape inside a small rented apartment with a slow, early generation computer, stacks of racing forms, and hours of raw data. Alongside Alan Woods, Benter began building a model from scratch. At the time, most people betting on horse racing used intuition, tips from newspapers, gut feelings, sometimes basic stats. But Benter wasn't interested in opinion. He wanted probabilities. So they started manually collecting race data from the Hong Kong Jockey Club, one of the most advanced and well-funded betting operations in the world. The betting volume in Hong Kong reached astronomical levels over 10 billion US dollars annually across just two racetracks, Happy Valley and Sha Tin. The data was dense, but it was consistent. Every result, every horse, every finish line logged manually, race by race. They looked at dozens of factors, the horse's weight, age, starting gate position, recent performance, the trainer's win rate, the jockey's history, even the weather on race day. Each variable became part of a formula, one that tried to calculate not just which horse would win, but how much more accurate their predictions were compared to the public's odds. The key wasn't to always be right, 
it was to be more right than the average better. In Hong Kong, odds weren't fixed by bookmakers. They were shaped by the crowd. Every price reflected public opinion. But public opinion isn't always accurate. Benter's model was built to detect inefficiencies, small but exploitable gaps between perception and reality. When the market misjudged a horse's true chances, the model spotted it. That's where their bets went. They weren't trying to predict every winner, only the mispriced ones. But building a system that could do that, reliably, at scale, wasn't simple. Their first season proved it. They lost over $150,000. But even after having this hard year, Benter didn't panic. To him, the losses weren't failures, they were data. Every wrong prediction showed the model where it was blind, where it needed to be better. The model was tested, refined, and tested again. And over time, it started to work. By the end of the 1985 season, they were winning. In 1988, they cleared over $600,000. A year later, $3 million. They had built one of the first successful horse race prediction models in history. And it wasn't based on insider information or trickery. It was pure math. But success brought tension. Alan Woods wanted to grow the operation fast. Benter, cautious by nature, wanted to refine the system further. Disagreements followed. Eventually, the partnership broke down. The two split, and Benter was left on his own. But he wasn't starting over. He had the data, the structure, and a working model. And now, he had full control. What he built next would turn everything up a level. After parting ways with Alan Woods, Bill Benter didn't expand, he refined. He took the original model, which had already made millions, and started from the ground up, rebuilding it with more data, more accuracy, and more logic. His early system had relied on a few dozen variables. Now, he incorporated over a hundred. Track bias, gate position, historical weather patterns, trainer-jockey combinations, even market behavior. But the breakthrough came in 1990. That's when the Hong Kong Jockey Club began publishing real-time odds. This gave Benter something he hadn't had before, visibility into the market's thinking. Now, he wasn't just predicting outcomes, he was measuring them against public perception as well. If the crowd said a horse had a 10% chance to win, but his model said 18%, the bet went in. Not because the horse was certain to win, but because the odds were mispriced. This concept, called value betting, was at the heart of his system. And by the mid-1990s, Benter wasn't just playing the game. He was running it like a hedge fund. His operation was fast, automated, and relentless. Every race day, tens of thousands of bets were placed across multiple pools. Some small, others massive, depending on the model's confidence. Everything ran on his code. But then, something unexpected happened. That's when the call came, from the Hong Kong Jockey Club. He assumed the worst, that the pattern had been detected, that the edge had been too sharp, that the system had finally decided to protect itself. But that's not what happened. Instead, they asked a question he never expected. What can we do to make this easier for you? Because while most gamblers were taking money from the pool, Benter was doing the opposite. He was filling it. The jockey club didn't profit from who won or lost. They profited from volume. The more money that flowed through the system, the more they earned in commissions. Benter wasn't a liability. He was a gold mine. So they made him an offer. Not a phone line, not an account, but a physical terminal built specifically for him a device called the Customer Input Terminal. It allowed him to bypass every bottleneck, phone delays, human input errors, dial-up latency. Bets that used to take 20 seconds could now be executed in milliseconds. And when you're placing 50,000 bets in a single session, that speed meant everything. It was a quiet partnership, no headlines, no public record, but it changed everything. Because now, Benter didn't just have access to the betting markets, he had access to the infrastructure behind them. 
And from that point forward, his system was no longer just efficient, it was untouchable. By 2001, Bill Benter's betting operation was functioning with the precision of an algorithmic trading desk. Every race day followed the same rhythm. His team would load the fastest racing data into the system, including updated horse stats, public odds, and market sentiment, and the software would begin running simulations. It wasn't just making predictions. It was calculating the difference between what the crowd believed and what the model believed. And that difference, even if only a few percentage points, was where the money came from. Multiply this over tens of thousands of bets per day, and the law of large numbers took over. The edge, however small, became profit. But there was one type of bet that stood out, the trifecta. It's one of the most difficult wagers in horse racing, predicting the exact order of the top three finishers. The odds of hitting it are extremely low, but so is the amount of money typically wagered on it, and that's what made it exploitable. Because Benter's model wasn't picking trifectas at random, it was identifying combinations that the public consistently underestimated. On one race day in November 2001, the model triggered a rare signal, a trifecta sequence with unusually high confidence. Three horses, not favorites, were showing strong edge across multiple indicators. Their order, according to the model, wasn't just possible, it was profitable. The system placed the bet, and when the race ended, it hit. First place, second place, third place, in exactly the order the algorithm predicted. The payout, 364 million Hong Kong dollars, roughly 50 million US dollars. But then, something strange happened. The ticket was never cashed. The winnings were never collected. And to this day, the Hong Kong Jockey Club has never officially confirmed who placed the bet. But those inside the betting world, including former insiders interviewed by Bloomberg and Wired, say it was Benter. And Benter has never denied it. According to him, the win was real, but by that point, it didn't matter. He had already made more than enough. The system had proven itself, again. He wasn't chasing money anymore he let the ticket expire. Instead, he anonymously directed a portion of the winnings to local charities. The rest was never touched. This wasn't about walking away with a final score. It was about knowing the system was complete. It proved the system was intact. The edge still worked. And most importantly, the market never caught up. No cheating, no manipulation, just data used better than anyone else ever had. And the most successful bet in horse racing history? It disappeared, quietly, just like he always did. And even after the trifecta, after the ticket, after the silent win. Bill Benter didn't announce anything. He didn't sell his story. He didn't publish a book or launch a company. He just moved on. He had already made hundreds of millions through his betting syndicate. And unlike most high-stakes gamblers, he didn't lose it. He kept a low profile and quietly shifted his focus. In 2007, he launched the Benter Foundation, directing large portions of his wealth into education, public health, scientific research, and local programs in his hometown of Pittsburgh. He became one of the largest private donors to Carnegie Mellon University, contributed to political reform organizations, and supported academic research into risk modeling and statistics the same field he once used to beat the racetrack. He also served as a visiting professor at the University of Southampton's Center for Risk Research, sharing insights from a system that, to this day, has never been fully replicated. Benter never released the full details of his model. He never had to. But his influence quietly spread. The principles behind his method, quantitative analysis, crowd inefficiency, probability modeling, are now used in financial markets, sports betting, online advertising, and machine learning systems around the world. To this day, no one has beaten the Hong Kong Jockey Club as consistently or as quietly as he did. And the system he built? It didn't require luck or charisma or even risk. Just a belief that in every chaotic market, there's a pattern. And with enough data, 
you can find it.